we are experimenting in all sorts of different ways with interdisciplinary work. Our Ursula project, which is looking at urban rivers, is one of our more interesting examples. The university is very supportive of cross-disciplinary work and it is prepared to put quite a lot of energy into facilitating workshops and other events. Uh, it also has a number of cross-disciplinary facilities available. So my Ursula team is based in the ICOS building, which is a building only allowed to be used when you are an interdisciplinary team. And there are several other facilities like that. It's very easy for us to sit within our disciplinary, what we say, silos, to sit within our enclave of colleagues who all work on the same thing. We have the same problems that we work on in the laboratory or at our field sites. We have the same textbooks that we use in our classes. One of the jobs that I have, and what is really important is the university, is that we also have mechanisms to push people out of these comfort zones, to drag us out of our silos and make us talk to each other in order to tackle these big multidisciplinary problems. On the Ursula project, for example, we have a full-time social scientist working in the same office as the scientists and engineers, so the constant communication is really key. We've put all the researchers together in one room so that the mix of researchers talk to each other and we've left the academics outside of the loop uh, looking in from outside and that's been really quite successful. Different aspects of the research are being dealt with by both social science and science and engineering uh, postdocs and academics um, and the project is looking at social, economic and engineering solutions to issues to do with river development. We have sociologists and political scientists, town planners and architects, engineers and scientists and we all work together to try and understand how water and its catchments work and how we can get benefit from those. My particular research area is uh, in landscape visualization and how that helps for decision making. We, we as a university were quite interested in the Ursula project in the collaboration with the city council because it, it provides us with the opportunity to work on a real world situation and on the other hand the city council is of course quite keen to work with the university to get state-of-the-art visualization facilities for example. What we've done is we've built up uh, an accurate three-dimensional model of this area of, of Sheffield along the river, people when they're actually down at location can relate to what they're seeing in the terms of these visualizations a lot better than they can sat at a desktop or in front of their own computer at home, which are all possibilities, we, you know, can distribute this through the internet and so forth, but I think the idea of actually, you know, they can even bring their own iPhone down and, and have a look if they've got one, so uh, I think the possibilities are, are really very strong. At the moment we're down by the Don River um, in an area of town that's called the Riverside. Uh, up on the hill there's Castle Markets where the Sheffield Castle uh, was originally founded. Um, so the, the city is here because of the rivers and in fact there are, there are five rivers in Sheffield and the city was founded at the confluence of two of those, the Don and the Sheaf. So of course Sheffield's quite famous for the steel industries and the metalworking industries and the the fact that there were so many rivers here contributed to the development of it as an industrial city. The place we're at on the River Don here in Sheffield is uh, an interesting example of the evolution of the interaction between cities and rivers. So we're standing over a goit where there's a weir just behind us where water was taken off to drive a mill. This area in the centre of Sheffield is very close to where some of the serious flooding took place in 2007. Over behind us uh, the river came over the banks uh, and flooded through the Wicker Riverside area and that has had a significant effect on the local economy. So part of our research is looking at how this area could be better protected from floods and whether that flood protection could be integrated with other things like redevelopment, ecological improvement and so on. We're looking at the 3D view of um, the proposed uh, new scenario. Um, so as you hold it up, uh, it aligns to the direction that you're um, holding it in and shows you the uh, future scenario. So we've seen uh, buildings in the background, proposed buildings, uh, and the uh, pocket park in the foreground. Um, as I move it round, we'll start to see the uh, existing cycle bridge and some of the existing buildings in the background. 
A really interesting aspect of the um, situation here is that we are on the river right in the middle of town and so the town has squeezed right up to the river side. Now over here on the right hand side we have a road with a steep wall and on the left we have buildings coming in close and so we have no room for the environment and no room for the flood water. Now if we push back from the river we think in our research you would get higher property values, a better environment and you'll have space for floods.